Hey guys, it's Miss E. Welcome back to my virtual classroom. Today's art activity is based off Bob Ross and Peapod the Squirrel by Rob Perlman. My little squirrel friend Peapod needs a new home. He keeps dropping pepperoni in my hair. But we looked high and low and we can't find the right one. Wait, I have an idea. Now then, let's have some fun. We'll use blue to paint the sky. And then we'll use white to make happy little clouds that just float around and have fun all day. We can use a painting knife too, which is like a regular knife, but you use it to paint, not to make sandwiches. We use a knife to spread in a mix of blue and brown and crimson to make mountain tops. Then we use a paintbrush to make the mountain bottoms. It's just that easy. Peapod likes to ski, so let's add some snow for him. Oh no, there's nowhere for Peapod to go. Let's use green and blue to paint the meadow before he gets to the bottom. Phew! Peapod's quick stop made some paint go splat. Oops. Well, that was a happy accident. Don't worry, Peapod. We can do whatever we like in our world. Let's use even more green, and blue, and some brown, and even some yellow to paint the whole forest of trees and bushes. Here's your bravery test, Peapod. Add more blue, and now there's a pond. Isn't that fantastic? I knew you could do it. How about a few more trees and bushes and grassy things? Let's just look at that and enjoy it. I think we're finished, don't you? Now this is a home for my little squirrel friend, Peapod. And not a bad spot for me too. Happy painting! The end. Alright guys, so these are the materials that you're going to need today. So a piece of cardboard, about the size of a piece of paper, Smaller piece of cardboard so you can use as your palette. An even smaller piece of cardboard to use as a painting knife. A cup of water with some different sized paint brushes ranging from really big to really small. A couple pieces of paper towels. And then for the paints, we're going to have white, red, blue, green, brown, and yellow. And don't worry, the materials will also be listed in the description box below. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be setting up our paint palette. I'm going to put three drops of white, two drops of blue, 
You can put two drops of green, but I have two types of green, a light green and a dark green. So I'm putting one drop of each. One drop of yellow, two drops of brown, and one drop of red. For each paint drop, I like to put around a pea-sized amount of paint. If you need more, you can always squeeze out more paint. So we're going to get started and we're going to follow along to what the book says. So Bob started painting the sky blue. So we'll do the same. So to paint my sky, I'm going to take my biggest paintbrush, pat it down to make sure it's dry, and then I'm going to mix a little bit of blue and a little bit of white to make sure that my sky is many values of blue instead of just one solid blue color. Notice how I'm not completely mixing the blue drop or the white drop and I'm still leaving some blue and white left over. Now let's start painting our sky. I'm going to paint the top half of our cardboard with varying colors of blue until you can't see any of the brown from the cardboard behind it. Now let's see what the next step is. And then we'll just use white to make happy little clouds that just float around and have fun all day. So let's get started on that. So for these clouds, I'm going to take the same big brush that I used for the sky, and I'm only going to tap it lightly on the white. To make my clouds, I'm going to use that same tapping motion that I got the white onto my paintbrush, and I'm going to tap all over my sky. I like to tap because paintbrushes have something called a footprint. Kind of like we have an individual footprint, but all types of paintbrushes have a unique footprint that create a pattern. And when a pattern repeats itself, it creates a texture. If you want to see what your paintbrush's pattern looks like, test it out on a separate piece of paper or cardboard. And this is your landscape, so you can add as many or as little clouds as you'd like. And don't forget that the top of clouds are always a little bit lighter than the bottom of the clouds. So take a little bit extra white and pat it on the tops of the clouds to give it that extra highlight. Now we're going to return our paintbrush to the water and we're going to see what the next steps are. The next step is to make a mountain. We could use a painting knife, which is like a regular knife, but you use it to paint, not to make sandwiches. And you use a knife to spread a mix of blue, brown, and crimson, which is red, to make mountain tops. So we're going to take our palette knife, small piece of cardboard, we're going to mix in a little bit of red with the blue and throw some brown in there. And just keep mixing until you get the desired color. Once you have your desired color, you're going to take your palette knife and you're going to scoop up a little bit of the paint and you're going to pick where the highest point of your mountain is going to be. Pick a point and then go down. And you're going to continue making as many mountains as you want. Some of my students made one big mountain, some made two or three. I'm going to make two, but you can make as many or as little as you want. And then we're going to grab a smaller paintbrush and we're going to take some of that same color and blend in the mountains downwards. And in the story, Bob's friend Peapod loves skiing, so Bob made him some snow on top of the mountains. You can make snow. I know some of my students have made lava coming out of the mountains and made the mountains volcanoes. You can do whatever you'd like, but I'm going to add some snow with my palette knife. The same technique that you use to make the mountains, you're going to make the snow with. I start up on top and slowly work my way down to the bottom. The 
The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to give the mountain bottoms a meadow. So you can take your green, or if you have two different greens like I do, you can take both greens. And the same way that you did the sky, using the paintbrush footprint, you're going to do the grass. And I'm going to tap my grass into the hardboard until it's all filled up. To make it look more realistic, you can also throw in some white and brown. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our flattest brush that we have. And as Bob says, we're going to be making happy little trees. So I'm taking a mixture of brown and green to start off with the trunks. And I'm just going to start off by painting one downward stroke with my flat side and then with the other side of my paintbrush I'm going to just quickly go back and forth and make the branches. Try to keep the paintbrush light and don't press down too hard. I'm going to repeat this step until I have my desired amount of trees. If you want to give the illusion of depth, change the sizes of some of the trees. Trees in the foreground are usually larger and lighter in color than the trees in the background. Given that, trees in the background are usually smaller and a little bit darker in color. Try out different techniques to make the leaves on your trees. Try using your paintbrush's footprint to make the texture of the leaves on your trees. So one of the last things that Bob added in his landscape was some details, which was some flowers. I'm going to take a really old paintbrush that definitely needs a haircut, and I'm going to use its footprint to make some flowers all over my meadow. Mixing a little bit of white and red together, I'm going to make some pink flowers on the bottom of my meadow. And at this point you can add different colored flowers and add them all over the trees and all over your grass. And make your own decisions here. Or you can follow mine, that's okay. I'm putting some yellow flowers in my trees, just using the footprint of my brush mixing them in with some of the pink flowers on the ground. And this last step is pretty important. So take the smallest, thinnest brush that you have and dip it in some white. And sign your work. And that's it guys, you are done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Stay tuned for more. Bye. Hi guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos similar to this one.